Tribes of Midgard is a survival action RPG. Join me as I embark on an epic journey through realms to face towering creatures hell-bent on unleashing Ragnarok. Will I be able to stop these creatures from unleashing Ragnarok and reach Valhalla? Or will the world be destroyed by Ragnarok? Watch me as I play 100 Days of Tribes of Midgard. So let's begin. I found myself suddenly teleported to Midgard, where Eira greeted us and explained the situation of the land. After our conversation, I ventured to gather nearby resources. Each time I acquired a new resource, a cat would appear to explain its significance and benefits. So every time I harvested something, I gained experience and soul. Soul is the in-game currency used to buy items from NPCs and also to repair weapons. As I delved deeper into the forest, I encountered a monster armed with a bow. And without any weapon or gear, I quickly ran for my life. I set up the old forge from my inventory, a station allowing me to craft other stations. Excited, I ventured back into the forest to find resources for crafting these stations. The monster once again spotted me, so I lured the monster back home where Era promptly took care of him. Crafting my very first station, the tool grinder. I could now create essential gears such as a pickaxe, axe, fishing pole, pole, and a sickle for gathering resources. With my new pickaxe, I finally began mining stones. While minding my own business, a pack of wolves attacked. I bravely tried to fend them off, but the best course of action was to make use of what I had. A very strong ally. Chopping a tree, I gained a level, which awarded me a blessing point, essentially a skill point. And for this playthrough, I decided to invest in the bow. Returning home with a load of resources, I crafted several new stations that would undoubtedly aid me in the future journeys. I finally was able to craft myself a bow. Unaware of the time, I realized it was already night, and shadowy creatures emerged from the depths. Using my most reliable attack move, I selected Aera to destroy the creatures of the dark. Continuing my resource gathering, a sudden werewolf jumped at me out of nowhere, but with a bow in hand, I quickly took care of it. As I explored further, I reached the Ash Beach, only to find that there was really nothing here aside from new materials. Then, glancing at my HUD, I noticed a runestone icon. Unsure of its purpose, my curiosity led me to pressing T, and to my surprise, it teleported me home. It was a very handy item, but it had a cooldown time of an entire in-game day. I stumbled upon a base camp of enemies near my base. Feeling brave, I entered and fought the monsters within. However, as I reached the middle, I encountered the boss of these monsters. And her dark beam almost one-shot me. Swiftly, I ran outside the camp, eliminating any chasers. For now, it was too much for me at that moment, so I decided to go back to resource gathering. Exploring an area called the Land of Pool, it became evident that goblins lurked around here. And I managed to kill one before heading back home, as night has already fallen. The highlight of the day was that I finally had enough resource to craft armor. I geared up from head to toe, ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. And now I look like a viking. I invested in two cool skills. One skill allowed me to leave an illusion behind after dashing, diverting the enemy's attention and granting me the freedom to strike them at will. The other skill enabled me to leap backward while shooting an arrow into the ground stunning my adversaries. Eager to test my new abilities, I ventured into the land of pool, systematically eliminating goblins as I delved deeper into their territory. 
and eventually I raided what appeared to be their settlement, complete with a treasure chest that I promptly plundered. I equipped myself with a shield and sword, contemplating swapping weapons if ever enemies closed in on me. While chopping wood, a giant lizard suddenly approached, and in an attempt to fend it off, I shot arrows into the air, hoping it would hit the unseen lizard. As I approached the giant lizard, I created an illusion to divert its attention and attacked it from a distance, repeating the strategy until the creature succumbed or died. A second lizard appeared and I applied the same strategy to overcome this threat. Seeking out new challenges, I ventured to the Ash Beach where I raided a shipwreck, uncovering and plundering the treasures hidden within. Then upon returning home with my newfound loot, I took the opportunity to upgrade my shield, sword, and bow, ensuring I was better equipped for the adventures that lay ahead. I decided to take on the boss near my camp for some payback, and surprisingly, it wasn't as tough as I thought. Thanks to my new gear, I easily defeated it. Not really easily, but I defeated it with ease compared to when I was not really geared up. I even scored some awesome loot, a prestigious treasure. I then unlocked a new skill called the Raven's Eye, letting me zoom out and take down enemies from a distance. This skill is a game changer for my range character. Life in the game just got a whole lot easier and I can now snipe enemies. I stumbled upon a cave and decided to explore its depths. As soon as I entered, a wolf charged at me. But my recently crafted bow made from giant lizard parts made short work of it. Raiding the cave was a breeze. With my improved vision, I sniped the boss from a safe distance. Without it even realizing, I was showering it with arrows. And after clearing the cave of all its inhabitants and looting the treasures, I returned to the surface. Curiosity led me to an icon on the map revealing a colosseum with a formidable boss. Inside was a boss named Jarsaksha, or how do you pronounce this? This marked my first boss battle. Jarnsaksha unleashed deadly lightning bolts that exploded on impact and my attacks barely made a dent to it. After chipping away more of the boss's HP, he transformed into a storm and summoned some totems which unleashed deadly lightning bolts upon me. As I risked my life chipping away at its health, a misstep resulted in my demise. Responding back at base and determined for revenge, I hurriedly returned to the Colosseum and with perseverance, I emerged victorious, earning a trophy exchangeable for golden horns, a very important item for the future. This victory allowed me to craft a quest board with great rewards, but the complexity of some of the quests left me stumped and I eventually gave up. The map revealed the next objective, and the next boss we need to fight is Halogi. And to reach it, I would need a boat for sea travel. And noticing in my inventory, I actually had three runes named Nothing to Hide. And I realized they significantly increased my damage if I fought butt naked. So I stripped off all my armor and I became a walking glass cannon, easily one-shotting enemies in sight. And upon reaching level 10, the game granted me a mount, a trustworthy horse companion, making travel much easier. I also crafted a portal shrine from the old forge, which made traveling significantly faster. I left one portal near the beach before going back home as I needed to get my boat at base first, then we can embark to Halogi. As I ventured further, I stumbled upon Fafnir the Sorcerer, a valuable merchant selling various materials for souls. This was a convenient resource for those times when I didn't feel like collecting specific materials myself. Completing all the tasks in the current land, I set sail towards our next goal, Halogi. 
Along the way, I couldn't ignore the increasing chill in the air. It was time to bid farewell to our nothing to hide rune and craft some warm clothes to shield myself from the cold. As I arrived, I noticed it seems to be a desert-like area. So I didn't think I would worry about the cold, but the moment I stepped foot inside in the desert, I, I felt warm. I, I don't know how the mechanics work in this game, but we really needed the clothes so we can't be butt naked with the nothing rune anymore. Equipped with an even better armor set, I returned to explore the deserts. Encountering a region teeming with fiery monsters posed no challenge as I skillfully sniped them from a safe distance, preventing them from getting close. The desolate wasteland revealed giant bones scattered across the sandy terrain, offering a potential source of new materials. I scavenged diligently hopeful that these materials would allow me to craft improved gears. And in the midst of my exploration, I crossed paths with Tanvin the goblin. It was a goblin full of treasure. Chasing him down, I acquired an elite gem and an elite rune. This newfound rune granted me the ability to spawn a random homing missile as I comboed my attacks. It is a neat addition to my arsenal. Continuing my plundering spree, I aimed to strengthen myself before facing the next boss. And to my surprise, I encountered Fafnir again. A uh, long last win perhaps? I wisely set up a portal nearby, making it convenient to access this additional merchant who offered valuable items in exchange for souls. I returned home with my newfound materials and made myself a new bow, the Ember's Bow. It had fire properties. And for today, I decided I should look for the snow biome in which I could craft the snowbow to fight the fire boss. And I headed southeast. While on my way, I saw a giant ogre. I never encountered one before, but I didn't fear the creature as I had the advantage of having long range attacks and it couldn't touch me at all. There was another one protecting a big camp of goblins. I went inside and took care of it and looting the treasures that was inside. Afterwards, curiosity filled me again as I saw a never-before-seen icon as I played the game. As I approach it, it seems to be a stag. Dane the stag to be precise. So I interacted with it and I received some reward, experience, and event fragments. After my shenanigans, I was ready to sail southeast to find the snow biome to make my snowbow or ice bow. And while on my journey, I happened to encounter an outpost. It was an area full of lava monsters, guarding a treasure chest full of great loot that would be needed later to upgrade my gears. As I continue my journey towards southeast, I found the glacier peaks. It was time to farm some materials here from the monsters and ores laying in the ground. I couldn't withstand the cold so I had to return home as soon as I could as I was dying. I made some cold proof seafood which provided me cold resistance for a minute and I could only bring 4 at the time. This was good enough as I had no other means to survive in the cold. I made no waste to the time I can stay in this place. I killed monsters, plundered treasures before returning home with enough materials to make myself a bow. And I found Fafnir again in the cold. Really who is this guy? He is a sorcerer after all, so I set up a portal beside his shop. And on this venture, I stumbled upon the boss Colosseum. I am lucky enough to find this without relying on the system to tell me where, I guess. I know where I'm headed next after Halogi. And as I ran out of food to resist the cold, I went home. I made myself an ice bow. And it seems like Zarn Saksha spawned in the world again, so I had to send her back to where she came from. It was pretty quick with my new gears. I was kind of overpowered for this boss at this point. This was a really good source of experience points and golden horn. Then I spent a good amount of time mining silver ores in the land pools as I needed more to make portals. And with an ice bow on hand, I remembered my goal, Halogi. It was time to go back to the desert and the journey to Halogi resumes. I made a bigger boat but I think it's too big for me. I had a hard time steering it so I had to leave it behind because it had 
it has gotten stuck between rocks and I no matter how much I tried I couldn't unstuck it and with my small boat I ventured once more towards Halogi I found a large shipwreck so I raided it since I was curious and would like to plunder the treasures inside and it seems that in order to go to where Halogi is I needed to go inside an underpass to pass through to the other side, it has been closed off by a giant wall. I encountered Ulfid the Brenalfer, and it was a challenge to fight with a bow inside a cave, seeing the enclosed space. But our illusion made it so that we could attack free from harm as it took all the damage from Brenalfer. I cleared the insides of the underpass before heading to the surface to face Halogi. He breathed, breathed fire through magma balls and swung his big sword. But with my dodging abilities, illusions, and fast reaction, I avoided most of its attacks. The fight went on for a while but with persistence of chipping away at its high health, I finally emerged victorious and we sent Halogi back to where he belongs, Muspelheim. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I had some gear upgrades, from new bows to new armors. Essentially something that helped me survive the cold in the next area of interest. Then I felt confident that I could take care of Garadir, or as it's called it, the ice giant. So I went to face it without fear. I teleported to my shrine and fought it. Its attack consisted of a large snowball being thrown at me and if it gets too close it would stop the ground and ice spikes would emerge from it. Good thing I had my illusion to tank everything and that's really all he did and as long as I maintain my distance and play it safe I could kill this boss with ease. With my explosive arrows I easily made its HP go from 100 to 0 and sent it back to Jotunheim. With both Halogi and Gerudir defeated I was now able to make myself a potion brewer and a defense workshop. I didn't really play much with a defense workshop but the potion brewer, brewer was uh, very useful. And Aver said the last Jotun we needed to defeat was Anger Boda, which is Loki's wife, THE Loki, and the mother of monsters. She conjures those dark monsters in the night and well that's what I understood from Era explaining. She was located pretty far from the base, so I had a long way to travel to before I fight Anger Boda. As I made my way towards the boss, I found a gate of some sort being guarded by two monsters. I took care of them and curious, I went inside the gate, the undergate, and on the other side it was Niflheim. It was full of monsters and resources I haven't seen yet. But it was also very cold here. I couldn't stay for very long. I had to leave as my life was draining every second because of the cold. I needed better clothing in order to fight the temperature. So I decided to explore the area later on once I have a good armor set that would protect me from the cold and I just left a portal near the gate so I can come back anytime. I've resumed my journey towards the next boss but I was met with a mermaid like monsters and I fought them. They were pretty tanky but were still no match with our current strength. I noticed something new as I arrived on this island. There was a dragon icon on the map so I decided to explore what's inside. It was full of traps and sirens or mermaids were guarding the center. And after defeating all the monsters, I had activated the dragon statue. It's called a beacon, or it's the beacon. I'm not sure what this does, but I'll leave it as is. Probably important in the future. And finally, after a long travel, I have reached Anger Boda. But I held up fighting it for now as I didn't have a good lightning bow yet. I decided to farm resources until I had an epic bow. From discovering a red gate, probably something like a lava gate, and then also going to Niflheim after I crafted better armors, I grinded and grinded. Levels after levels, and gaining materials as much as needed. I went on a grind fest.
I defeated Anger Boda and sent her back to Niflheim. And what's next was we needed to repair a bridge towards the glacier peaks. And there would be a residing gate that opens up a portal to Fenrir, a giant dog we need to fight and send back to where it comes from. I headed straight to the lair of Fenrir only to find out that I needed some hideout fragments and quest fragments. I needed to finally do some quests which I held off as I didn't know how the mechanics actually worked. So basically when you accept a quest an icon will show up in the map on where the NPC requesting it is located. I didn't know that until I put the time to figure it out. And as for the hideout, I already have the location after purchasing a scroll from one of the merchants. As I was heading towards the hideout, I discovered this other gate. I couldn't interact with it and I wasn't really sure how this works. So I just left a portal shrine and went on with my journey. At this point, I was very close to the hideout and I had to go through an underpass before I could reach it. But no problem, I explored the cave, cleared it out and went to the other side. And after reaching the hideout, I placed down a portal and went home. This was a point in the game where I thought, hey, I would like to try a sword. And after trying out a legendary Sigan's Blade, I was convinced I had to change class. I crafted equipment and shields suitable for wielding the sword. I bought a potion from the merchant to reset my skills. And now I was a swordsman. My dark sword could spit out three bolts forward and have a death laser beam that sucks the life out of my enemy. Whilst my lightning sword could summon thunderbolts and have an area buff that gave healing and also has a very large circular AoE skill that sweeps everything around me. This was one of the best choices I did in the game. I also crafted myself a legendary hell set. It, it wasn't complete because I couldn't unlock everything. I didn't have enough golden horn. But yeah, it's a legendary armor which had the leech buff on it. I was thinking it might be a lifesteal and I don't know. I think I was not wrong. So yeah, I totally look like a dark knight now. I tested out all these new stuff in the hideout as I wanted to get the fragments as soon as I can so I can face off with Finrir. And after clearing the area, I got the fragments and I went out of the hideout. I needed to grind for a while as I needed some levels. I missed the improved vision I last had when I was an archer. So I had to level up 3 times in order to get that skill again and it was too useful to pass on. After fixing Fenver's gate, I immediately head inside and walk towards the center. Whee! I then summoned Fenver and initiated the fight. My strategy here is that with a shield on hand, I would block all his attacks and as he was invulner I mean vulnerable, I would slash him multiple times. This went on for a while since he had like massive HP at 393k. But with my ability to drain HP, I was immortal in this fight. And also with my tree of life buff from my lightning sword, I don't think I'll ever get low HP. And thus, I defeated Fenrir. I got a Fenrir rune, it's a legendary grade rune that reduces durability cost and doubles my damage if my health ever goes down by below 50%. This was a really good rune so I had to wear it. The next object did was to light up 3 beacons and I already lighted up 2 beacons when I was exploring randomly. So the only thing left was to light one more. So we could fight the next mo next boss, which was Jermongard, or I'm not sure how to pronounce this. After lighting up all the beacons, the unknown gate we couldn't interact before would now be available to enter. It was Jermongard Slayer, the next target. I summoned the creature by dropping Thor's bait to the sea. Jermongard's attack consisted of it spewing poison and puking poison. But he also bites and whips his tail on our face. But same strategy with Finvir. I'm honestly immortal right now. I don't die at all as long as I block massive attacks. And as long as I have the Tree of Life buff active on the ground, I would heal infinitely. So I just whack and whack until Jermongander. Jermongander. Jermongander the Bonebreaker was dead. 
German Gander also dropped a rune. It made me had infinite swim duration with increased speed of 75% as well as having an increased HP of 50%. That's crazy. I'm basically a god now. And for the next mission, I had to raid outpost to get materials to activate the glacier peaks gateway. And after that was done, I went to the red gate I saw before and activated the portal. After entering the gate, I arrived at the volcanic spire. I needed to defeat enemies in order to unlock the defenses in the area. I honestly just killed some random enemies. I didn't notice the quest on the left, so basically it just opened on its own without me realizing it. The next mission was to defeat Muspelorms, so basically these fire lizards. And after defeating about 5 of them, I went deeper into the volcano and fought two generals, Edler and Aska, the Brenalfa Brenalfar witches. And now I was ready to face Surtur, so I head inside the lair. I summoned Surtur and he emerged from the vol volcano. This was the start of an epic battle. His attacks consisted of him smacking the floor and a line of fire would be summoned. He can also summon pillars of fire and he also has a very dangerous breath of fire. But thankfully my dark beam can leech off all the HP he's damaging me and healing myself so fast that that uh, his damage was insignificant. I continued this while sustaining myself with health. I just shielded myself. I life drained him. I kept attacking and attacking until eventually he died. He also dropped a rune. It had an ability to nullify hot temperatures and also prevent damage from swimming in lava. It also gave a bonus of 150% on the last attack on a combo. And every single one of these runes were amazing. So now, for the next mission, we needed to convince a guard at Niflheim to let us in the gate. The guard required materials in order to unlock this gate. I have two of them but I was missing some tooth and eels. I needed to find a well in Niflheim which consisted of the eels I could fish up. And for the tooth, I just need to locate the tentacle looking icons in the map and I could extract the tooth that was hanging from these roots or tentacles. After finding the well and fishing some serpents, then extracting some tooths, I went back to Modgor to give the items needed to pass. And I was walking towards the inside of the gate. I have saved the ensnared Balder and we fought Hell together. Hell had a really cool attack pattern, dashing like a star and throwing dark balls at us. But like the other bosses, they couldn't really do much in terms of DPS. So they couldn't lower me enough that I would be scared for my life. So yeah. Tanking, leeching life, and just macking him was all that was needed to take this guy down. But it did take a while to chip away all the massive amounts of HP. But yeah, we killed hell with no sweat on our forehead. And thus, the last boss was defeated. Or was it the last boss? So yeah, I had a brief talk with Baldir before opening the chest and obtaining Hell's rune. I didn't really pay much attention to this guy. But hey, the rune. Uh, the rune gave us immunity to cold temperatures. And it also increased our movement speed by 20% at night. And it also has a mana overtime regeneration. Upon returning home, I noticed a new portal. It was a portal to Valhalla. And going in it seems the place was infested with monsters and was under siege. So I mowed down the monsters that were at the bridge trying to pass and add over to check what the commotion was all about. As I defeated monsters, sometimes this mysterious figure pops out of nowhere just smiling at us. I defeated monsters after monsters 
fighting my way to the great hall and upon climbing this long stairs i talked to a valkyrie she's saying we've been deceived but by who and as i went inside i saw baldir and when i talked to him he transformed into someone named loki but man look at that smug look <laughs> i just can't <laughs> So this is just funny I, I just couldn't focus so not paying attention to whatever he was saying he summoned a gorgon he was one of his precious little pets he said earlier this creature was pretty dangerous it could turn me into stone and if i didn't have any area buff i could actually die since without attacking i couldn't do any life steal Tree of life was the very thing that's keeping me safe and alive during this fight, so I had to spam it most of the time. I eventually emerged victorious and was rewarded with a Loki stone. It had the ability to petrify enemies upon comboing them, and it also increased all my damage by 40%. I have became somewhat OP after receiving all these runes. And uh, with that victory, I have saved Valhalla. And thus ends our 100 days gameplay of Tribe of Midgard. <laughs> This ends our 100 day gameplay of Tribes of Midgard. I can't thank you guys enough if you managed to reach this point of the video. Thank you for watching. I didn't really play 100 days. I managed to beat the game within uh, day 34. But hopefully you guys still had a good time watching this video. And if you want more 100 day gameplay videos, uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I'll be cooking more of these videos in the future. Yeah, once again, thank you, bye, and uh, have a good day.